Here's one of my favorite study tips for this domain. Make a table with all the data sources and technologies mentioned, like NetFlow, TCP dump, next-gen firewalls, and proxies. And in one column, write what kind of data they give you. In the next column, write what they're best used for. That kind of breakdown is super helpful when you're trying to figure out which tool fits best in a given scenario. Hi there, I'm Kyle Winters, Technical Advocate at Cisco, and welcome back to the CCNA Cybersecurity video series. Domain 2 is where things start to get really practical. This is where we move from high-level concepts into detection, how we actually see what's happening in the environment and how we spot potential threats. If Domain 1 was about what security is, Domain 2 is about how we monitor it. The domain makes up about 25% of the CCNA Cybersecurity exam, which means it's the largest single section by weight. So if you're trying to prioritize your study time, this is definitely one to spend some extra time with. Let's start by talking about attack surface and vulnerability. The attack surface is basically all the ways an attacker could try to get into a system. That includes open ports, exposed APIs, unpatched devices, anything that's accessible and potentially exploitable. Vulnerability is the weakness itself, like a misconfigured firewall rule, or outdated software. Understanding the difference between the two is foundational because a big part of monitoring is figuring out what attackers might see before they exploit it. Now let's talk about data. Domain 2 is packed with questions about the different types of data we can collect and the tools we use to collect it. You'll want to be familiar with technologies like TCP dump, NetFlow, next-gen firewalls, traditional stateful firewalls, application visibility and control, web and email content filtering, etc. Each of these provides different insights into what's happening on your network. For example, NetFlow gives you metadata about traffic flows, which is who's talking to who, for how long, and how much data is moving. TCP dump, on the other hand, captures actual packets. The key is knowing what type of visibility each tool gives you and when you'd use it. Speaking of visibility, this domain dives into how certain technologies impact what we can or can't see. Things like NAT, encryption, tunneling, TOR, P2P, and load balancing can all limit visibility. For example, if traffic is encrypted, you can't see payloads without decrypting it first. If a device is behind NAT, you might lose source IP tracking unless you correlate logs. The exam won't expect you to solve these problems, but it will expect you to understand why they matter. Then we get into types of monitoring data. These include full packet captures, session data, transaction data, statistical data, metadata, and alert data. These are often used together in real-world monitoring. For example, an alert might trigger an investigation where you then pull metadata or session data to understand what happened. If things get serious, you might even review full packet captures to confirm exactly what was said between systems. The more familiar you are with these data types, the better prepared you will be to analyze logs and traffic flows, not just for the exam, but on the job too. Next, let's look at attack types. This domain expects you to recognize examples of network attacks like denial of service, distributed denial of service, man in the middle attacks, and protocol abuse. You'll also want to understand web application attacks like SQL injection, command injection, and cross-site scripting. And then there are endpoint-based attacks like buffer overflows, command and control communications, malware infections, and ransomware. You'll also see questions about social engineering, which now includes not just manual phishing and pretexting, but also AI-generated attacks. Think about voice cloning or convincing deepfake messages it's not science fiction anymore. These things are happening in the wild and detection tools have to evolve to keep up. This domain also covers evasion and obfuscation techniques like proxies, tunneling, and encryption. These are methods attackers use to hide their traffic or sneak past detection tools. Again, you're not expected to stop these techniques. You just need to understand how they work and how they might impact monitoring. There is a section in this domain focused on certifications and their role in security. You'll need to understand how public and private keys work, what a PKI is, 
in the difference between asymmetric and symmetric encryption. You should also be able to identify components of a certificate, like the cipher suite, X509 format, protocol version, and key exchange method. These might seem dry at first, but certificate issues show up constantly in real environments, from expired certs to mismatched trust chains, and they can directly affect visibility and detection. Here's one of my favorite study tips for this domain, Make a table with all the data sources and technologies mentioned, like NetFlow, TCP dump, next-gen firewalls, and proxies. And in one column, write what kind of data they give you. In the next column, write what they're best used for. That kind of breakdown is super helpful when you're trying to figure out which tool fits best in a given scenario. To wrap this up, Domain 2 is all about understanding what's out there, how we can observe it, and how attackers try to stay hidden. You'll need to know the tools, the data, the limits of what you can see, and the kinds of attacks that are likely to be happening behind the scenes. In the next video, we'll shift from the network to the endpoint with Domain 3, host base analysis. That's where we focus on what's happening inside the systems themselves, things like logs, malware behavior, and evidence collection. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.